So I'm um, going to hear now from the Nye family, a story going to be presented by Gareth Nye, who talks about lovely, lovely Gracie's diagnosis when she was a young baby and their fight for technology. I personally remember the story. I'm not going to go into details about that. But I think what you guys should do is have a listen to what Gareth has to say. Over to you, Gareth. Thank you for inviting me to talk today at the Type 1 Diabetes and Technology Conference. Um, I'm going to be presenting my daughter's story today and how technology has influenced us and our journey to get in there. But before we get into the story of Gracie and her experience of technology, it's probably a good idea to introduce the main people of this story. So as you've seen on the first slide, my name is Gareth. I'm Gracie's dad. And next to me in that picture there is my amazing wife uh, and Gracie's mum, Joanne. We've got three kids, uh, Megan, who is 12, Gracie, who's five in November, and who this story is, is focused on, and Cameron, who is just turned one. So Gracie is the only type one diabetic in our extended family. And we currently manage her type one with the Tandem T-Slim insulin pump and the Dexcom continuous glucose monitor. Uh, the technology has changed the lives of our family and most importantly, Gracie. However, getting that technology wasn't straightforward and I'm here today to explain our journey and how the fight was ultimately worth it. So Gracie was diagnosed on November the 2nd, 2018, following a severe DKA episode shortly before her second birthday. Now I'm a lecturer in physiology and I like to show this timeline to my students when talking about diabetes to show how quickly things can deteriorate. On the Wednesday, she had a slight cold, sore throat and was drinking more. And by Friday, she was vomiting and rushed off to hospital. And I'm sure this story is to no surprise to anybody in this audience here today. But obviously for us, this was quite a big shock. From diagnosis, we were taught to do routine finger pricks and multiple daily injections for Gracie. And there are loads of good reasons for doing this in the first instance, mainly because it's always the backup in case the technology fails or you know, for, for whatever reason, it's a good backup. So it's good to get into a good routine of, of working with daily injections and finger pricks. We actually made the decision to continue on with this management routine for, for quite a while, mainly because it just worked for us and more importantly, it worked for Gracie. She didn't mind the finger pricks, she didn't mind the needles, and although not ideal, her HbA1c levels were not bad. Well, not bad for a two-year-old anyway. And for a while, we went with the idea of if it's, if it's working, why change? And Gracie, even at the age of two, was doing some of the insulin needles herself. So for us, it was working. Up until a point, the main problem was Gracie was completely hypo-unaware. And her hypo signs were nondescript if they showed at all. It would take a low of below 2.5 before she would show any obvious symptoms. And these symptoms included being drowsy, making no sense, being emotional, struggling to move. And as anyone with an experience of a toddler will know, these symptoms could fit most toddlers, especially Gracie. The low started to influence Every part of Gracie's day, however, uh, nursery was challenging. Planning a day out was like a military operation. And most importantly, we were checking on Gracie throughout the night, every night. We had also plateaued in terms of our HbA1c numbers as well. So after discussing with our team and taking our issues on board, uh, a continuous glucose monitor was the solution. Weighing up every option, our needs, Gracie's age, everything else, the Dexcom was the most suitable CGM for her. And so our team applied for it in June 2019. After our diabetic team sent the initial request to our local CCG, it took 13 months before Gracie got her Dexcom. Hopefully by sharing our journey over that 13 month period, we can help others in similar positions and maybe show why we were so keen to keep on fighting for this technology. I do have to mention in our story in particular, there was a compounding factor. Our clinic and our postcode where we live are within different CCGs. 
making the process difficult from the very start. After sending the initial uh, request off in July 2019, our team received the letter rejecting the funding for the Dexcom. And this came as a shock to us all, um, especially considering Gracie's situation. And there was absolutely no explanation given as to why it was rejected. Again, in July of 2019, our team and I sent separate appeal letters to the CCG, really stressing the need for this technology. The fact Gracie was hypo unaware and was having frequent severe hypo episodes and our belief based on the NHS guidelines meant that she definitely fell within the bracket for accessing this continuous glucose monitor. Again, as a lecturer in a medical school, teaching physiology, clinical medicine, and having worked in a clinical environment for about seven years at this point, I knew how to access the NICE and NHS documentation. Even so, it took me several days to compile this four page appeal letter. So I understand how it can be quite a daunting task for anyone in a similar position to we were. The crux, however, of our appeal was that both the NHS and NICE guidelines and recommendations stated to offer ongoing real-time continuous glucose monitoring with alarms to children who have frequent severe hypoglycemia episodes, impaired awareness of their hypos, and an ability to recognize or communicate about these symptoms, which Gracie met in every category. This again was backed by the National Pediatric Diabetes Audit Data, Diabetes Charity Data, and statements from the Royal College of Pediatrics of Child Health. Despite all of this, Gracie's funding was denied for a second time in September of 2019. After the second refusal, we understood that the main issue was Gracie was not on an insulin pump already. Our CCG policy said that a continuous glucose monitor would only be considered on patients using an insulin pump in accordance with NICE appraisal tag 151. Now, when we looked this up, that appraisal was actually published in 2008, over 10 years earlier. Having read this document, they had even missed the part that stated that insulin pump therapy is recommended as a treatment option, providing that MDI therapy is considered impractical and inappropriate. And we'd already displayed that Gracie had no problem with the needles. It was only the severe hypos that we were having trouble with. Together, our clinic and I decided that the only way to push this further was to get some outside help. I contacted my local MP in September of 2019, who kindly took the time to contact the CCG personally and was given the same refusal that we did. It did this time, however, confirm that their argument was that Gracie was not already on an insulin pump. From here, we, point, we were pointed into the direction of the Input JDRF, uh, which is a merger between the JDRF charity and Input, who advocate for better access to technology. And although they were really helpful, by the time we made this contact, we had exhausted all of the options that they had available. They did, however, introduce us to the medical technology group and Ration Watch, and ultimately it was decided that it was time to go to the press. Working with 39PR, Gracie's story was published in the Liverpool Echo and the Mirror newspapers in November 2019. And despite not changing the CCC's decision at this point, it made the most impact to our journey up until now. This story was shared widely and connected me with Claire Howarth here at Diabetes UK, who worked hard through the charity to get Gracie's story brought forward regionally and nationally. The story also led me to connecting with a network of paediatric diabetes consultants located throughout the UK. Professor Parthikar contacted Dr Fiona Campbell and Dr Chris Gardner, who all agreed with our initial argument and couldn't understand why Gracie was being refused this technology. Each one of them offered tremendous support, with Dr Gardner contacting the CCG himself, and Dr Campbell even suggested we move to Gracie's care to her group in Leeds. Although at this point, we were happy with our care where we were, 
And we wanted to make this case heard and get this point solved for others rather than just getting the access to the technology. With the growing backing that Gracie was entitled to this technology and the increase in resistance from the CCG still, in March of 2020, we contacted the current health secretary at the time and the health service ombudsman for a final roll of the dice. With all of this background work from the diabetes networks and charities working alongside us. Gracie was finally given access to the Dexcom in July of 2020. And we still to this day have no idea what the turning point actually was. Having the Dexcom has had an immediate impact on our lives. Technology not only allows us to see her blood sugar at all times, it means we can prevent lows before they even happen. The alarms built in to the Dexcom meant that we could sleep better at night without the worry of missing a low. Conversely, it's meant that we can stop the high blood sugars as well and ultimately give Gracie the best blood sugar range possible. Her HbA1c is much improved again and we felt confident in her being cared for in nursery and now school. Receiving the Dexcom in the middle of the pandemic was even better. It made remote clinic appointments meaningful as the team had access to the data and ultimately during a worrying time, it gave us one less thing to worry about. She now has an insulin pump and the Dexcom has integrated into that and helps control her diabetes even more now. But all of that is the diabetes management benefits. What has this Dexcom and this access to technology actually done for Gracie and us in real terms? Well, as you can see in the pictures, family members suddenly felt more comfortable in looking after Gracie for long periods. This was something that was essential when our youngest Cameron was born as we had to take our take over the care uh, to our family. It made the care of Gracie at nursery and now school a little bit more straightforward, particularly when you add trips out into the mix, and we're even more confident now in letting her attend after school classes. Periods of illness were so much more manageable now with this technology, but ultimately the Dexcom and now the insulin pump has allowed Gracie to feel that little bit more like everyone else. Technology in type 1 diabetes has the potential to change the management of diabetes and should be freely available to anyone who seeks to use it. The technology isn't always perfect and it requires a lot of trust, but it's getting better all the time and is simply life changing for diabetics and their families. Was our fight for technology worthwhile in the end? Absolutely, but it was a fight that shouldn't have happened. Unfortunately, Gracie has absolutely no idea of the hard work that all of the people listed here have done to help her live the life that she does now. But I know if she did know, she would want to thank her amazing team at Warrington and JDRF, Import, Diabetes UK, everyone who worked on getting her story shared, Claire Howarth and the team at Diabetes UK and the diabetic consultants who ultimately helped fight our case and give Gracie what she has now. I'd like to thank you again for inviting me to talk today. And I hope that sharing Gracie's story has been helpful to someone else out there. Thank you. Thank you, Gareth. And a tough story. And um, everybody knows my views on these. And I remember Gareth very clearly, the, the reach out that he had done and uh, People will know my views on these things. I've got very strong views on these sort of issues. You know, it's it's not beyond the remit of us as clinicians to do what we need to. And there's been multiple occasions where I've had to pick up phones for simple things. You know, we're talking about in this case, in Gracie's case, about the Dexcom, talking about pumps, etc. Sometimes it's about insulin prescription. Sometimes it's about simply uh, just the basics. So, um, but I'm sure the Q and A will come up with those things. Uh, but I, as I said, thank you very much for that story. And uh, it's it's tough to hear, but it's something which, as Garrett said at the end, hopefully changes the life for some of the people.